Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And I'm checking in on you. Just checking in on you. <clears throat> How are you? Oh, fucking Ebola Billy is back. <clears throat> and he's feeling better than ever. No more coughing fits. No more night sweats. No more sleeping under a mosquito net with my fucking malaria. Um, I don't think malaria is a funny reference, considering each year, 42% of women on the planet suffer from this, while the men are giving endless supplies of NyQuil. Oh, here's something I, I started to talk about the other day on one of my podcasts. One of my many rambling, nonsensical, whatever the fuck you say, podcasts. Um, out here in Los Angeles, Hollywood specifically, there's a group of people that want to get the Hollywood sign taken down because they live near the Hollywood sign and there's too many fucking tourists. I just don't, like, that has got to be one of the most fucked up things I've ever heard in my life. Like, the whole city has to suffer, you know, while you take down this iconic sign because you were dumb enough to buy a house Next to a tourist attraction, you fucking moron. I mean, why don't you just buy a house across from the fucking Magic Castle, whatever the fuck they call it down there at Disneyland, and then get upset? You know, we need to shut down Disneyland. There's too many people walking around with, like, Mickey Mouse ears on. It's almost like I bought a house right across from fucking Disneyland. I could see if it was a new like since you bought the house that, uh, you know, all of a sudden they put this new fucking thing up and you're like, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, wait a minute. This was a quiet neighborhood when I bought the house. That's why I bought the house. And all of a sudden there's all these fucking people. <clears throat> people, have been, that, that, that fucking sign, it's, it's like 80 something years old, right? The fucking sign is probably as old as your house. I don't know what the problem is. Let me look this up here. Hollywood sign history. It used to be called Hollywood Land back in the day. Yeah, it was Hollywood Land. I mean, I think they actually think that the Native Americans put it up. If I'm not, it might probably said something else like Hiawatha or some Native American shit. Is that actually Native American shit or is that some white Hollywood shit? The history of the Hollywood sign. A sign born in 19, all right, 1923, that fucking thing has been around. And then some asshole with a house that was built in fucking 1978 that they just bought in 2016 wants the fucking thing taken down. All right, nobody gives a shit about the history of the sign. Oh, wait a minute, maybe people do. All right. The sign's almost 100 years old. It's fitting that the Hollywood sign, the worldwide symbol of the entertainment industry, was conceived as an outdoor ad campaign for a suburban housing development called Hollywoodland. After all, despite the high profile of the film biz, real estate has always been Hollywood's primary economic driver. Although the signs... What the fuck? No, it hasn't. You needed the entertainment industry... So it could make stars so they could afford all these fucking houses. Who the fuck would move out here just to live in a fucking house with all of this traffic? All right. Although the sign's appearance and purpose has evolved over the years, its basic aspirational message remains the same. This is the place where magic is possible, where dreams can come true. And these fucking people that live near the sign want to take this down. Huh? Back then, the dream was, be- was a beautiful home and lifestyle. Today, the sign's promise is more subtle and can only be described as the parade of images, desires, and ideas con- conjured by the word Hollywood. I think that they're fucking looking into this a little bit too much. No, Hollywood, you come out here because you want to fucking star in movies or write movies or direct them, you know? Then to take advantage of your position of power act like an animal, and then have the whole fucking thing come crumbling down. I mean, that's, 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 what's, that's what's been going on since we've been out here. Uh, take down Hollywood sign search. Seize the Hollywood sign. 
Okay, Christine O'Brien has decided, I guess nobody in L.A. should get to look at that fucking awesome sign anymore. All right, there's a woman who wants to get rid of the Hollywood sign. I can't blame the impulse. It looks so good, attacked by tornadoes and aliens. What? There's such a rash, such a rush in the slow creak and the quick crunch of the corrugated letters peel from the scaffolding and fly off from mountain. Whoa, the fuck wrote all this shit? The worldwide fame of the sign is bolted to that image of dis- of its destruction. Right, hey, Christine O'Brien, though, suggests taking the sign down and moving it to Universal Studios on the other side of the hill or erecting the contextless H at some sort of tourist trap in the flats of Hollywood. She lives in the sign's original namesake, Hollywood Land. The sign once read Hollywood Land. Does that mean her house is where land used to be? This person, are they really smart or is English a second language? She lives in the sign's original namesake. Does that mean she lives in Hollywood? A small, steep, disorienting neighborhood where big houses hug the streets in front and hang off into nothing in the back. Hollywood lands, nests of streets rise out from the top of Beachwood. Jesus, this fucking verbose cunt. All right, the strangest thing about the Hollywood sign is that everyone let a huge real estate advertisement slowly rot on one of the city's most prominent peaks for 55 years from when it was planted on the hillside by Hollywood Land Realty Company in 1923 until it was dug up and replaced in 1978, slowly accruing meaning and sentiment over the same decades. Uh, Los Angeles was earning its reputation as a place that was happy to demolish its own brief past. Dude, is this the weirdest right person writing ever? It's like it just like contradicts itself. I can't even read this shit. All right, let's let me just go back here. Hollywood sign, hiking to the sign, the Hollywood sign, Hollywood sign knocked down. Here's the best way. Hollywood sign trail closure is long overdue. Hang on a second here. I'm sorry. This is just all fucking interesting to me. They got somebody with this selfie stick. That's not a really, that's not a good argument for the other side. I just don't get people that fucking bought houses up there. Like, what did you think was going to fucking happen? And like, how much money do you fucking have? And how much of a cunt are you? Just move it to the other side. I actually think, to be honest with you, the fact that someone would want to take that sign down is a clear example of the, of the disappearing middle class. They don't want these animals going up there, these lower class people walking around their fucking goddamn walled off house. All right, why is it long overdue? It was a great hike. All right, in a span of about 10 minutes, so-and-so can hike from a paved road in the Hollywood Hills, Beechwood Canyon neighborhood to take a breathtaking view of uh, Griffith Park, the city skyline, and, of course, the Hollywood sign. When I have the free time, I always like to come here. Nobody gives a shit. But after this weekend, uh, she will lose her quick, quick escape to urban life. Starting Tuesday, the Beechwood Drive gate will be closed to public because of court action. Hikers and tourists will be directed away from the trail entrance. The soon-to-be closed trailhead is popular among Angelinos as well as tourists wanting a selfie with the world's most famous sign, blah, 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 blah. Some residents welcome the closure, even though they, along with other visitors, will no longer be able to access the trail. It's long overdue, says Jim Krantz, 60, stopping. Yeah, I'm an old angry guy. Get out of here. Like you didn't go up there and you fucking 23 skidoo with some fucking chick back in the day. And now your fucking old legs are too old to go up the trail so everyone else can't go. Everybody get me fucking suck my dick. He did that back in the fucking, well, that would make him too old. The Vietnam era. I don't know. Uh, okay. Gate while walking through. Okay. I, I'm always walking my dog. We come up here every night. We're going to miss our little hikes up here. Still, while the closure is a bummer, it's worth it, he said. There's a classic fucking L.A. guy, 60 years old, still saying bummer. Who'd you interview, the fucking dude? 
I prefer to have it locked and lose all the people and all the noise and all the sound and all of the litter and everything else that goes along with it. It's not a legal challenge by residents, but one from the Sunset Ranch, a horse stabler and tour company. Okay, so it's the horse people. That is putting an end to public access to the trail road. All right, fuck it. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I thought it was the people with the houses. Now it turns out it's a fucking rancher. What's the matter? All the selfie people are spooking your horses? Is that what's going on? Did I just waste 10 minutes talking about that fucking sign? Why, Bill? Why did you waste 10 minutes? Because your fucking team lost again last night? Yes, they did. The finesse Bruins, the goal-scoring Bruins, once again, uh, lost to the, the pretending-to-be-tough Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, I've been watching the Bruins for 40 years, and it's been a long time since I've seen us get pushed around the way we're getting pushed around. And I think uh, we got too many Rick Middletons and not enough Jay Millers. We need uh, we need somebody. I don't know. We're just letting people waltz into the fucking zone. And I kind of feel like after the first two games in Toronto, Toronto made an adjustment and kind of showed how to beat the Bruins. And I think we caught Tampa a little flat because of their layoff, and we beat them in game one. And they're basically just doing the same fucking thing that Toronto did to us, which is, you know, we're kind of a one-line team right now. I don't know. Maybe we just had a couple of games that were bad. Um, <clears throat> but it's not the Tampa scoring goals. It's that they're fucking all this face washing and all this shit that they're doing, and now they're starting to fucking act like they're this tough team, and they're not. I mean, I could beat up half the people on, Tor- on Tampa. That's a true story. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I don't know. It's just weird. I've never seen the Bruins. Not saying it, it's happening a lot. It's ha- they're just taking a, a little too many fucking liberties. And um, the calls haven't been going our way the last two games. So I got to feel like we're due this game. You know? I don't want to sit here and bitch about the officiating because some nights you get the calls, some nights you don't. And uh, it's just been kind of back-to-back. I don't know how you miss a stick hitting an eight-foot guy in the face. I don't know how you miss that. And then you turn around and call a penalty on his retaliation. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a... uh, But generally speaking, I don't think the officiating... I think I don't know if they're overthinking things. It's just been weird. Not as much bad, just kind of weird officiating. So maybe, who knows, tonight we're due, uh, next, uh, tomorrow night, maybe I guess we play. We're due to get some calls. Um, however, I will say this, the uh, rebuild has been a success. The fact we already won a fucking playoff series, and we could win this one. We could actually get to the Eastern Conference Finals this quickly after blowing up the team. So I am happy about that. I just wish we, would, uh, we had a little more teeth, you know? I mean, Tampa, I don't look at Tampa. They don't have any giant fucking goon. They're basically a bunch of goal scorers and a couple of fucking punks. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what the fucking deal is. I'd like to see Nash use his size a little more and fucking lay somebody out. Even if you got to take a pen. Is that, is, is that game gone now in hockey? I mean, we had our first fight last night. It's fucking unheard of. Fucking 10 games in to the playoffs. We had our first fight. Um, But, you know, all these people that watched Olympic hockey, this is the hockey that they wanted so they can now sit down and watch it, which they're not doing, the cunts. You know, I think the people that tried to get fighting out of hockey are also people that want to take the Hollywood sign down, those kinds of people. Oh, by the way, you guys keep asking me about this Michelle Wolf thing. I haven't seen it. I don't pay attention to the news. But evidently she did the White House Correspondence Dinner and everybody's all up in arms because she told some jokes, which I can totally understand. I mean, she's telling jokes, people. I mean, that's, that's how fucking dangerous is that, you know? It's just unbelievable to me that it's okay to uh, genetically alter our food supply. That's okay. You can take all the fucking principles of heroin and, and, and create them in the synthetic form and create a fucking nationwide heroin epidemic. That's fine. Not a word from CNN or fucking Fox on that shit. Not a fucking peep, right? You can totally cook the economy, leave millions of Americans upside down in their own fucking houses the rest of their life. 
They're going to owe more than what their house is worth. And then you give the houses right back to the bankers so they can do it all over again. All of that is fine. All of that is fine. But evidently, if you're a comedian and you tell some fucking jokes, people are going to debate it for 10 fucking days. While they're feeding kid, their, their own fucking kids this poison food that's going to make your nine-year-old have a fucking mustache, his fucking nuts are going to drop before he learns how to ride a bike. It's so full of fucking hormones and all this other fucking shit. Evidently, that is fine. Poisoning your own food supply. Something ISIS jerks off to doing to us. I mean, are those not terrorist acts against your own fucking people? The people that did that shit should literally be hanging from their toes. But there's not a fucking word that's said about it. Not a fucking word is said about it. Because they advertise on CNN and Fox. And they donate to fucking politicians. So they don't say a fucking word. You know? All of these fucking presidents, they leave the office worth tens of millions of dollars despite the fact that they only made 500 grand a year as president. You tell me how that math works out. Why isn't that ever talked about, the level that they do now when a comedian tells a fucking joke? It's ridiculous. Um, I'm off my soapbox. Jesus fucking Christ. this This is literally the era of just getting outraged about something that really doesn't fucking matter. While, meanwhile, two feet away, there's a raging fucking inferno. Can you believe the jokes she told at that fucking place where she was hired to tell jokes? Can you believe she went in there and did her fucking job? Oh, my God, that's outrageous. Let's talk about that for 10 days and ignore the fact that the Ford Motor Company is phasing out cars because no one buys them anymore because everybody needs an SUV because their cars are full of shit that they don't need, that they're eventually going to take down to Goodwill and is going to end up in the fucking ocean in that swirl of fucking trash. Fuck all of that. Did you hear that Caitlyn Jenner joke? Did you hear what so-and-so said about Donald Trump? Um, <clears throat> this is why I don't watch the news. This is why I just sit alone by myself and think things and agree with them and then spew them out as though they're fact. I mean, why not? Why can't I have my own little news network? Why can't I behave like CNN and Fox and curate my fucking news and spin my own fucking angle on it and then just have Americans yelling at each other? I don't know. I don't understand why people, like the, the level of mouth-breathing moron you have to be to be on Facebook right now screaming at somebody about politics or social issues, you know, and even worse, the people that totally buy into it and then start using all that fucking corporate speak like that was microaggressive, you know? (laughs) Walking around like you're this informed person. Ah, they can all go suck a dick. Good for her. She went there and told some jokes and she ruffled some feathers. Good for her. All right. Now they're going to treat her like she's in fucking ISIS. Classic, classic journalism in the modern era. All right, um, I got a couple of, um, so that's what I think about that, okay? I don't need to fucking watch any of the jokes. I know she's fucking hilarious, and I know that it's completely blown out of proportion, and everybody's running around like fucking chicken little. People with blue ties yelling at people with red fucking ties. Or the blue tie people like it, because the red tie people got it worse, or vice versa. Um, all right, plowing ahead here. Meanwhile, there's going to be a fucking polar bear swimming up to my fucking house in about three years. All right, Butcher Box, everybody. Butcher Box delivers healthy, 100% grass fed and finished beef, free range organic chicken, heritage, heritage bred pork, which is the purebred pigs, swine that came over here from Europe, okay? Not the bastardized ones that we have here that are all, all mixed up, all right? These are pure pigs um, to your door on a monthly basis. You know, it's funny that they do that with dogs and pigs. You know what I mean? It's like if you like took out dog and pig and you actually put human being in there, you'd sound like a grand dragon. Uh, all their products are human, humane, humanly, humanely raised and never given the uh, antibiotics or, or hormones. I got to tell you something, man. I've been eating that stuff all week. It's delicious. Absolutely Delicious. 
Uh, high quality, healthy protein you can trust. Unbelievable taste. There's a huge difference in taste between animals raised on pasture and those fed grain and concentrated animal feedlot operations. Yeah, that's the difference between cool kids and people with helicopter parents. Butcher box, well, actually, probably it's not a good example. Um, parents that love them versus parents that uh, abuse them. But at the end of the day, they do kill the animals. So I don't think there's a lot of love there. Butcher box is changing that. And they offer free shipping anywhere in the lower 48. Um, I like how they said in the 48 states. I mean, do I get to pick which 48? Alaska and Hawaii. The middle children of our states. They, never, they just never feel like they get their due. Because they're not connected to us, you know? What do you think would happen someday if Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico all got together? and decided to take on Blackwater. Now, that's a fucking movie I would like to see. Um, offer $20, $20 off plus free bacon. You get $20 off and free bacon by going to butcherbox.com slash burr and using the discount code burr, B-U-R-R. I have the hiccups now from talking about food. Um, Express VPN. Victor, Papa, November. Uh, Facebook has been in the news a lot lately, getting thrashed for letting third parties get your user data. Uh, But do you really think they're the only ones doing it? No, I don't. (coughs) I don't. Because I just got some spam from some fucking incorporation that I have, and the only people that had it was the bank. So the bank obviously sold it to some other cunt. So now I'm getting this fucking pamphlet asking me if I want to take a fucking trip to, uh, I don't know, Honduras. Internet providers like Verizon and Spectrum can record a list of every website you visit, and they can legally give it to anyone. It's time to stop trusting big corporations with your data and start protecting it with ExpressVPN. Ah, oh, I like this. A little pushback. With ExpressVPN, you can privately and se- securely surf the internet without being tracked by anyone. Set up on all of your devices only takes a few minutes. The ExpressVPN app runs seamlessly in the background of your desktop, laptop, and smartphone or tablet. Your network data is encrypted and IP address masks, keeping your activity and identity completely private. Well, what if somebody hacks into your system? For less than $7 a month, you can be protected for ex- with ExpressVPN. But at least you're putting up a fight. You know, this is like prison now, you know? You just don't want to be the easy target. Now move on to somebody else. Every ExpressVPN plan is covered by a risk-free... I'm going to sign up for this shit. 30-day money-back guarantee. After you've experienced the freedom, privacy, and safety that ExpressVPN gives, you're never going to want to use the internet again without it. To take back your internet privacy today... And find out how you can get three months for free. Go to expressvpn.com slash burr. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N. Echo, X-Ray, Papa, Romeo, Echo, Sierra, Sierra, Victor, Papa, November.com slash burr. For three months for free, protect your internet and data with ExpressVPN today. You know, if politicians weren't strictly driven by money... um, You know, you'd be able to go, you should be able to go and sue everybody that put all your fucking information out there. You know what I mean? I don't know. They need to have like, uh, they need to have stricter rules on hacking information. You know what I mean? We got to act like the way they do in, in like Southeast Asia. When bankers step out of line, they put them to death. You know, I'm not saying we got to kill these fucking people, but like, the, you know, we can bring back the stockade, right? Nah, you can't do that. We'd be like, we would sit there and be like, well, what does that make us? We can't do things like that. We're not supposed to be like that. We just waterboard people. Waterboard them. Doesn't water, waterboarding sounds, that sounds like a fucking, sounds like a game that you, a toy that you would have before like the fucking, internet and all the cool shit came along you know remember all that bad those awful the fucking games that we had at least we got outside and we weren't fat fucks do you guys remember trackball see if i can find that commercial it was like basically 
I think we actually bought that. Trackball commercial. Let's see if I can find this thing. Trackball by Whammo. Oh my God, this takes me back. This takes me Whammo. Whatever happened to those guys? The internet, video games. Ah, this is somebody fucking playing trackball. I want the fucking commercial. You know, I don't understand these people that, like, you know, their kid's about ready to bump their head, and rather than preventing it, they let them do it so they can fucking get a YouTube video out of it. 20 pictures that Hillary Clinton wish, wishes would go away. That's what that, I look up trackball, and then that's what I get. The night Ted Nugent, this is what you guys can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up my information here. By the videos that just came up here, you guys will f- understand what I look for on YouTube. All right. Michelangelo 2018 Rock and Roll Led Zeppelin Tribute. The night Ted Nugent challenged Leonard Skinner. Jonathan Moffat plays Michael Jackson's Billy Jean. He's a drummer. 20 pictures that Hillary Clinton wishes would go away. Family never believed their grandpa's crazy stories until, and there's a picture of an old trunk. The dragon takes its toll in blood. This is a motorcycle video. I do watch people wipe out on motorcycles. You guys do that shit? I don't like watching, like, knockouts. I used to like watching that shit, but there's just too many fucking sucker punches and shit like that. But I do like watching these fucking people on motorcycles driving like goddamn lunatics. I like when they run from the cops and they get away. And I like watching them wipe out. I don't know what that says about me. Brutal motorcycle crashes, part three. Part three. Four million, eight hundred thousand fucking video. Look at this guy. Oh, bam! He was going too fast. He rode right into the fat guy, and the fat guy didn't even fall down. Now the guy, the guy doing the front fucking, this is my favorite one. You know when they do the front wheelie, and at some point you have to let go and do the face plant? Dude, I swear to God, people on motorcycles, they're just, they're just a different breed. There's a level of balls. There's a lot of fat guys on motorcycles right now, you know? That has to affect the center of gravity of the bike. It's got to bring it up higher, right? That's probably why this guy just went down. Here's another guy going into a turn. Everything's going good. There's snow on the ground. What could go wrong? This is the last one I'll do because I know this is getting boring here. Anything I can do to avoid talking about how miserable I was watching the last two fucking Bruins games. Um, What's going to happen? Is a deer going to come running out? This guy seems to be riding very responsibly. He's checking out all the beautiful uh, areas. Is he going to get hit by a Santa Claus sleigh? Oh, we hit the ice and he goes down. Oh, that sucks. Well, what the fuck were you thinking? Well, here's a guy on a track. Here's a smart guy. Why don't more people go out to a track? There's no branches or fucking SUVs out there. Um, all right, I'm done with that shit. Um, speaking of which, I got to get my truck tuned up. Get that fucker ready for the summer out here. Get that fucker ready for the summer out here. Um, oh, by the way, I'm having a very special guest coming out to the podcast next week. Uh, very special guest to promote their new show, Barry. On HBO. It's going down next week. A very special guest will be coming on to my repeat. Very special guest. So you can look forward to that. I have a week of shows coming up out in San Francisco. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There was another show that I was announced on. Some sort of benefit I saw on Twitter. I don't even know what the fuck that is. My agent called me up asking me if I knew what the fuck it was. Nobody knew what the fuck it was. I'm not going to be doing that benefit. Why would I schedule a a competing show in a fucking... All right. Ah, Christ. I got to call this person back. All right. Well, listen, that that was the Thursday fucking podcast. Jesus Christ. You know something? I literally, literally phoned this one in. I spent 10 minutes talking about a fucking sign that I thought the neighbors were bitching about. It turned out it was a fucking horse farm. 
Um, was there anything accomplished? I defended Michelle Wolf. Okay, how about that? Without ever seeing what the fuck she said. I, I don't even give a fuck. You, you, you told jokes. It's like getting mad at a plumber because they came over to your house and, 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 and plumbed. You get offended by the way they snake out a fucking toilet. Um, I think that's all I did, really. Is that all I did? Well, you know, what do you want from me? You know what's cool was seeing Pedro Martinez at the Bruins game. I wish the Bruins and, I, I mean, Boston teams would do that more. You know, our legends just, like, disappear. You need to have them come back around and talk to the younger people about the fucking... Even if it's from another sport, it's still great just to see a champion there. It was Bobby Orr and Pedro Martinez. Um, but, like, I always bothers me. Like, Larry Bird, like, he just, like, left. You never see the guy come back. But, you know, he was always like that, right? He always wanted to go back to the country and just be left alone, you know? You know, there's a bunch of billboards, a couple billboards out here. These fans put up asking LeBron to come out here. I mean, that's how hard people go out here. That's how much money they got. You know, they can just pay for billboards. All these fucking whining ass Laker fans because they've been bad for a couple of years. Give us the best player. That's all they fucking do out here. It drives me nuts. <clears throat> you know, it's just the Celtics can't compete with it. I've been saying this for years. This is our pitch. Hey, do you want to come to racist Boston and deal with the winner and fuck sixes? Or do you want to go to racist Los Angeles where it's summer every day and fuck movie stars and, and, and supermodels? We can't compete with that. I don't think there's one infinity pool in Massachusetts. <laughs> Dude, I got a backyard rink you can come over and skate on. Um, All right. I got some shit to do. Uh, That's the podcast. Go Bruins. Go Celtics. Celtics game two against the 76ers. Mo Cheeks, Andrew Toney. Huh? Those are the Sixers I remember. Um, I'm going to be watching that tonight. Actually, no. I'm going to be editing F is for Family, and then I'm going to go do a spot somewhere, possibly. All right? That's it. Listen to the music and enjoy another half hour of uh, some... Thursday afternoon podcast from earlier this year or maybe one from years ago. I have no idea. Have a great weekend, you cunts. I'll see you on Monday. You are my dream Sweet Leilani Heavenly flower. Tropic skies are jealous as they shine. My sweet Leilani, I think they're jealous of your blue eyes. Oh, lovely Leilani, jealous because you're mine. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it is the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday. May 3rd, 2010. Um, how the hell are you? I got some great news for you. The podcast is back. It is back up on iTunes. And right now, you're going to go to iTunes, and you're probably not going to be able to find it because uh, it's, it's going to take three to six days for it to actually appear if you go to search it because iTunes is a pain in the ass, as we've noticed over the last three months. But my new uh, my new sort of web guy here has been able to fix the thing. And basically, if you want to find all the podcasts since the beginning in 2007, right up until now, all you have to do is just go into iTunes. And uh, once you're in iTunes, you click on Advanced. And it, once you click on Advanced, uh, what you do... Two down, click on subs- subscribe to podcast. And then this little window will open up, and this is what you type in. All right? Type in www.billbird.com slash podcast and hit OK. And um, you know, that'll be it. You'll be in. You'll have all the podcasts from here on out. 
until the end of time, unless something happens to me, because uh, this is my podcast thing, whatever the fuck it is. I'm not with the Gcast anymore. I'm not with that Libsyn shit. I'm with my own thing, so I don't have to deal with their fees. I don't have to deal with them suddenly going out of business or switching the way that they do things or their intellectual properties or their fucking whatever the hell it is that they're doing. And this is why it took me so long. And I just want to thank everybody. I appreciate the patience. I even appreciate the angry emails people sent me like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Um, I appreciate all of that because that meant you give a shit and that you like to listen to it. So once again, go into iTunes, and at least on a Mac, if you click on Advanced, the window that opens up, the second thing down will say subscribe to the podcast. You open that up, a window will open, and in it you will write www.billbird.com uh, slash podcast. All right? And it's the regular slash the one that starts further to the right and then comes to, I don't even no 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 I don't even don't even try to describe a backslash I don't even fucking know how to tell you that um so that's it and one other thing I have to hype is we have our a fan page now here on the uh Bill Burr uh, Monday Morning podcast and that one is uh www. the capital M capital M uh capital P and then you're spelling podcast I'm the worst. www.themmpodcast.com and MM and the P of podcast are capitalized. That's how. So go on there. Leave your comments. If you want to check out some pictures of some of the fucked up references that I'll make to whatever podcast you're listening to, they'll be up there. I actually asked you guys some questions on there. I haven't done that in a couple weeks. But finally, everything should be up and running. And that was probably the driest, most unfunny Three minutes and 25 seconds I've ever done on the podcast. But I had to get that information out there. Um, I'm going to send out a mass email, and I'm going to put it up on Facebook and on MySpace, all that information that I just gave you. And if you know other podcast listeners, if you want to email what I just said, email it to them, and maybe I can uh, maybe I can build it back up again. You know? It's kind of like a uh, something that went out of business, and then they, it was kind of like the Jay Leno show. I went away for a minute, and now I'm back, and I'm trying to get my ratings back again. Granted, I I didn't kick out some unsuspecting redhead. I kicked myself out, and I am an unsuspecting redhead. And speaking of redheads, God damn it, am I good with the fucking segues? Somebody sent me something this week. They sent me a video. And they were like, uh, why did I just say that like David Tell? A video. Somebody sent me a video and said, you got to check this thing out or whatever. I don't know if you've seen this yet, but there is a video on YouTube. Um, are you guys familiar with the artist uh, MIA? She did that song, I believe, was it Paper Planes? Um, you know, it's that song you couldn't fucking get away from last year. Where it was like an awesome song, and then every filmmaker in America seemed to fall in love with it and put it in their movie or even something like Pineapple Express. It wasn't even in the movie, but they still put it in the trailer. Right? I like paper and I like planes and I like something and I'm fucking lame. If you're something and you're something and you're something. Yes, Bill, we know. Huh? There's this one. There's a bad cover. There's my cover of uh, MIA's uh, Paper Planes. Or whatever. I know it's not called Paper Planes. It's called something else. Something with paper in it. You know? So anyway, she has a new video out that somebody uh, brought to my attention. And I hear the relaxed confidence in my voice now. I feel so much better now that I know my podcast is back up on iTunes. Even though for three to six days, most of you will not know that. Because you won't be able to find it. Because you won't have heard this. Um, anyways. Uh, so somebody sent me this thing. This uh, this video. Um, MIA has a new video called Born Free. All right, so they should you go. Know, you should check this video out, and it's actually a video my girlfriend already showed me. She goes, "I want you to see this, okay? And just watch it with an open mind. I don't you want you to criticize it. Just watch it, okay? Can you do me? Can you just promise me that you're not gonna go? Oh Jesus! Two seconds into it, can you please? So I said, "Yeah, fine. I'll sit down and I watch it." And it's basically uh, not to whatever. I'm gonna ruin it here. All right, spoiler alert. Um, basically, the video is about, uh, it's not really army guys, but it's more like uh, sort of riot police guys, white dudes, I think, all white dudes and like riot police. 
and they're uh, they bust into this apartment building that looks like it's in the Middle East. It's got that Middle East sort of uh, vibe to it, um, which basically means uh, you know there's some bullet holes with some sand in the background. To me, that's the Middle East. You know, could be Miami. I don't fucking know, right? So um, I'm watching this thing, and they basically they just go through this uh, this apartment complex just horrifically, kicking in doors violating everybody's rights. They don't give a shit what people are doing because they're looking for this one dude. And they find the dude, and they grab the guy, right? This red-headed white dude, sort of a buzz cut, I guess. And they grab him, and he doesn't want to go, and they're fighting him, and they bring him downstairs. And then they put him on a bus. And he gets on the bus, and it's a whole bunch of other redheads. It's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole bus full of redheads. All right? And uh, right there, I was like, oh, Jesus. But I didn't say anything because I promised my lovely girlfriend I'd watch the whole thing. So long story short, they drive him to a camp. They have him get off the bus, and then they make him run so that all the the police can basically kill him. And they have him run through minefields and all that type of shit. And it's basically commenting on the racial profiling, the genocide, and some of the stuff that has gone on in the past and is evidently going on right now. All right. It made no references to Iraq, but it definitely had a Iraq sort of uh, feel to it, except it was redheads. So in the end, my girl's like, well, what did you? And then like these redheads, their fucking arms are flying off. All right. They're beating them with clubs. They're doing all this horrific shit to him, to this sea of redheads. And she said, what did you think? And then this is basic. And I'm also answering this uh, person who sent it to me what I thought of it. I thought it was a great idea for a video. And I thought it could have made a good point if they didn't pick the singled out group of redheads for the simple fact that uh, nobody gives a shit about redheads. (laughs) We're just, I don't know what it is. People don't. They they just don't care about us. You know, remember when Kanye West was saying, you know, George Bush doesn't care about black people. Well, nobody cares about white people. So, you know, at least somebody cares about black people. It's just George. George doesn't, you know, but there's there's people who do. (laughs) That was my thing. The second they decided redheads, it just became a comedy. And I got to admit, it was weird because I've never seen a busload of redheads. It dawned on me. I've never seen that. Like I've seen a busload of like, you know, generally speaking, you look on a bus, it's a bunch of people with brown hair, the occasional blonde, right? And, uh, you know, maybe a redhead. Every five buses, there'll be one redhead. But an entire busload of redheads was funny to me and also also, it was oddly disturbing. It, It was, they were weird looking. And I realized in that moment, Even as a redhead, I'm going, look at those weird-looking sons of bitches. And I realized that this is the deal with redheads. We are not the main course. We are a spice. We are the spice in like, uh, uh, I don't know. We're like red pepper flakes that you put on like, I don't know, a steak or something. If you ordered something in a restaurant and all they brought over was the spice, you'd be like, dude, what the fuck? Where's the meal? That's what, that's what, what redheads do. That's our job with people. You go to a baseball game and you're just sitting there going, Jesus Christ, how many fucking brunettes can I look at? Bam, there's a redhead. Whoa, shit, there's a redhead, right? Resets your brain and you can look at some more brunettes now. That's what we do. So uh, long story short, that's what I thought I thought about the video. I thought it was a, uh, just because they, I don't know who else they could have picked. I understand what they're saying. What if they rounded up this certain segment of white people? Would you give a fuck now? You know, I guess. You know, as always, I, I, I don't know. I don't fucking know. But like because it was redheads, I just felt at that point, the second they started running through the minefield, they should have had uh, they should have had like Benny Hill music. And they blew them up because it just was funny to me and weird. It was oddly like if you were walking down the street and all of a sudden, like just a group of redheads was just walking the other way. You can't tell me that you wouldn't be creeped out or uncomfortable. Just for the mere fact that you've never seen it. See, like, those are my fucking people. And I saw them all together and I was weirded out by it. Am I a self-hating redhead? I don't think I am. I just, I don't know. So check it out. It's called, uh, you want to see a bunch of redheads get get beat up and 
blown up. There you go. I mean, fucking South Park did that shit where it was kick a ginger day, and kids actually did it. They actually went out and fucking did it. You couldn't have that about any other group without some sort of outrage. You know? Flick some Jewish guy's balls day. You could never have that. They'd be, they'd be considered anti-Semitic. It'd be taken off the fucking air. If you said something about black people, you know? Redheads, I don't know. We, we fall into those weird cracks where we're white dudes, so no one gives a shit. But uh, are we a silent minority? I used to do bits about that, how redheads are portrayed in, the, in movies. You know, we're never the cool guy. We never are. We're always the friend with the guy in the van, you know? When Tom Cruise is in there going, you know, I'm like sitting there in a van in a laptop. He's, he's running around with like fucking Halle Berry or some other ingenue. You got to give me more time. And then I'm in the van. Oh, I'll try, you know, and I'm clicking away on my laptop. That's what I'm doing. No pussy. No sunshine. No pussy. Okay? Since the beginning of filmmaking. Huh? Opie. Richie Cunningham. Howdy Doody. David Caruso was our only fucking shot, and he blew it. He fucking... I used to talk about this shit on stage. He fucking blew it. So, I mean, I don't know. That's just how we're... Uh, Eric Stoltz came close. He came close, but then he did the movie Mask and once again reminded everybody that he was genetically compromised. Um, What else? Has there been one? Even like Sean White, the baddest snowboard in the world. What they call him? The Flying Tomato? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks for that that fucking horrific fucking nickname. There's no goddamn respect, you know. And here I am, a redhead myself, and I watched that video, and I thought it was funny. We thought it'd be funny. Remember that Joe Piscopo when he used to do Alan Funt? We thought it'd be funny. All right, so let's plow ahead here. That's what I thought about that shit. Um, I did a lot of TV watching this week, but I'm gonna try to get back to some of the the topics here on the podcast. Oh, here's a little story for you I was going to tell you. I forgot. I've actually already recorded this podcast. I recorded it last night, but I was tired and I was grumpy. I was in a bad mood because I had another incident with my downstairs neighbor. The continuing story of the downstairs fucking neighbor. And for those of you who are new to my podcast, I have a, a neighbor downstairs, classic, you know, old guy, and uh, we have hardwood floors, and he thinks we make entirely too much noise, and he fucking hates us. So, uh, But I confronted the guy, so he doesn't yell at us anymore. And uh, yesterday, I was uh, hanging out, and I was doing what most people of my age do. 41 years old, what do you do? Uh, you're helping out your wife. You're taking the kids to the park. Fuck no, you're not even married. You don't have kids. You know what you're doing? You just, you're taking your LP of For Those About to Rock that you just bought. <laughs> and you're putting it on your turntable because you know that Angus is always in the right speaker and Malcolm is always in the left, and you want to learn the rhythm to evil walks. That's all I wanted to do, people. I wasn't hurting anybody. All right? And f- and for underrated, overrated, very underrated ACDC album is the For Those About to Rock. The problem was is they were following the Back in Black album, but if there's any guitar players out there, you got to fucking listen to the to the the B side of that album. All right. Evil Walk, C O D. Um the whole the whole backside I love. I'm trying to remember what the what the last song is on that one. I can't do nothing right. Da, 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 da. Spellbound. That's another great one. And it's just I don't know. I it's the the craziest thing where now that I've started playing guitar, is I am finding a whole nother genius level to ACDC music that I've now been listening to for 30 fucking years, if you can believe it. Malcolm is an ap- and Angus, they're fucking geniuses. So this is all I want to do is, you know, I'm never going to be able to, well, who knows? Maybe if I play till I'm 65, I'll actually be able to play a couple of Angus leads if I stick with it. But, like, I just want, that's why I started playing guitars. Like, I just want to be able to play the shit that Malcolm plays, just the rhythm underneath, right? So that's all I'm doing. I'm sitting there with my fucking, my phonograph, my record player, my stereo, whatever you want to call it. And I'm getting ready to switch the balance all the way over to the left so I can figure out what, what Malcolm is doing. What the fuck does Malcolm do that makes you, if you had the last row 
of the fucking Roman Colosseum, he's still blowing you out of the back of the thing. You know, it's all about not playing the high E with those guys. They're fucking maniacs. Anyways, so this is what I want to do. So I switch it over to the left side, and I find out my left side speaker is fucked up. I'm like, God, Jesus Christ. So I'm trying to fix the thing, and as I reach behind it, I got this little, I don't know what it is, you plug the speaker into this little, it's like the size of like a matchbox car, right? And I knock it out, and it hits the floor. Boom, hits the floor. And I was like, God. I literally made that face like, you know, because I don't want to piss off the fucking bear downstairs, right? So he doesn't yell at us anymore. So you know what this douchebag does? He gets up, dum, 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 dum. I hear him walking over to his door, and he opens up his door and then slams it as hard as he can. And I really wish that I was mature enough as as an adult to just laugh that off, but it made me so fucking mad. Because I literally feel like this is like the the, the I'm, I'm walking around on eggshells, my own goddamn apartment. You know. Here I I drop I drop one fucking thing all day, and I literally go like, oh my god, what did I do? I'm literally on eggshells because and, you know, and and this is what always happens to me. I always get on eggshells around people initially. That's my initial reaction when someone's a dick is I kind of back off a little bit, you know, and then I then I always go into, wait a minute, what, are you really tiptoeing around or whatever the fuck it is I'm doing? And then I get mad. And uh, so that's what happened with that guy. And it's just, it's just like, I, I don't know how to solve this. It's an old guy. I can't yell at him. I just can't. It's, it goes against how I was brought up. It's common decency. He's an old son of a bitch, whatever. He's fucking miserable. But he keeps doing this this fucking alpha male shit where you're slamming the door like, like I don't know if I'm wrong to read it that way. Like, like what do you, you think is some sort of fucking badass? Remember that commercial where you want to dance, old man? You want to fucking dance? That's what I feel like doing. Walking up in a swamp. Why can't I open these goddamn blinds? He's probably going to be upset with the noise I just made there. There you go. Move the screen. Oh, fuck, this thing's going to slam open now. Watch this. This happens every week. There we go. Now it's open. Now it's open. Um, Yeah, so I was dealing with that fucking guy. So anyway, so I did a podcast last night, and just the, the anger I had for that guy was just running through the entire thing. And I was like, who wants to listen to an angry son of a bitch? And I know what you're thinking. Bill, you know, that's when I think you're funniest when you get mad. It was a different kind of mad. It was like a serious, like, dude, why don't you just fucking get over it kind of mad. So... So anyways, oh, here's, the, here's a story I wanted to tell you. I had a gay little moment yesterday at a, uh, when I was hanging out with my girlfriend. You know, you ever have one of those moments? You know you have. I was uh, driving back from somewhere. Uh, oh, a vegetarian restaurant that my girlfriend wanted to go to. She's like, you want to go to, you want to go to Eddie Cucumbers? And I'm like, No. But I told her I'd take her out to breakfast, and then it became lunch. And then she wants to go to this fucking vegan place, right? You know, where they have, like, you know. <laughs> the chef should literally come out and be like, okay, who likes impressions? All right, this is my impression of bacon. <laughs> you know, he just wheels out some brown soy that he that he fucking. <laughs> That's all it is. It's It's a bunch of, it's soy. Soy is like the rich little of a vegan restaurant where it can fucking imitate everybody, but not quite. It's more like Rich Little in the 80s when he stopped working on his impressions and he, and he was still like nightly doing like an impression of like Lyndon B. Johnson. It's like, dude, we're already up to the fucking first George Bush, which we're not aware of yet that it is the first George Bush. Uh, unless we're Marty McFly. So anyways, uh, so we go there, we fucking eat there. Um... And we're driving back. She goes, I want to get some ice cream. You want to get some ice cream? I know a great ice cream place. So I said, fuck yeah. I love ice cream. I love it. I like to eat ice cream. You know? I'm not ashamed of it. I know. You know, who doesn't like ice cream? You know, maybe people who are lactose intolerant. Maybe they don't like it. People who, who didn't floss throughout their life so it hurts their teeth. You know, there's one for you youngsters. F- brush and floss every night because if you don't, Someday, ice cream is going to hurt your teeth, and you'll never be able to enjoy it again, you know? Someday, you'll have full upper and lower dentures sitting there just fucking doing that thing. You know, you know, people chew when they have dentures. 
They do that thing where they look like they're trying to blow a bubble with their food. For some reason, their tongue has to stick out like a goddamn llama. You don't want to do that shit. So anyways, I'm like, yeah, let's go. So um, why am I walking around? I don't know why I'm walking around. What the? F- why am I questioning it? I felt like walking around. I'm walking around. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, so we go to this, this ice cream place. And of course, it's not like the old school ones that I used to go to, like Friendly's and Brigham's. Where you just walked in and there was like, you know, what do you want? You want chocolate? You want vanilla? You want strawberry? You know, Rocky Road. They had a couple of those. I never like Rocky Road. I don't like marshmallows. I really don't. They're just, they're fucking gross. They're, they're just, I don't know. Usually when something's gooey, it makes it good. Like melted cheese, but this marshmallows are fucking disgusting. You know, all you douchebags out there making s'mores. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. But anyways, so we go to the, we go to this... uh we go to this place, and we walk in. It's one of these places now where they have all these new f- fucking, I don't know what kind of flavors they got. I was going to say funky flavors, and I realized that I shouldn't use that word, so I had to go back to fucking. I was like, should I say it? Should I not say it? F- fucking flavors. Um, they had like red velvet cake ice cream. I mean, it doesn't even make sense anymore. So they had another one that was like, you know, caramel something and it had grape nuts on the top of them right so this is the deal i don't know if you've never been to one of these designer ice cream places but what they do is their flavors are so fucked up you've never had them before so you got you want to try them out so how it works is they scoop a little bit out with that this little plastic spoon and then they hand it to you and then you eat it you're like oh I, I like that one let me try this one so my girlfriend's doing that and it's this dude scooping the ice cream out so it's like already it's just like weird like which one you want to try and even like the names. Oh, let me let me try the triple foofy fucking one, right? So I, I go, let me try the grape nut one, right? So he scoops a little bit out, and then he goes to he goes to <laughs> he goes to hand it to me. And the spoon is so small, there's there's like there's no way for me to take it from him without brushing my hand against his hand, you know. And then I also I have to take it in, in a very a very like delicate way because I don't want to spill the ice cream. So my hand grazes his hand, you know, like we're in Lady and the Tramp fucking eating spaghetti in a hand kind of way, right? And I take it from him, and then I eat the ice cream. And it just, it just, and there was something about it that just felt wrong, okay? I just sort of, it, it was intimate. I had an intimate moment with his hand in my hand, and then I put a sweet treat into my mouth afterwards and told him it was good. <laughs> So here's the best part. So I don't give a fuck what that ice cream was felt like. I was like, I'm taking that shit right now. Let me let me get that flavor because I don't know if I can do that again. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I'll either start blushing or ask for your phone number. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so the best part was after I go, yeah, let me just get that grape nut flavor. My girl goes, oh, no, you get two scoops, two different flavors. What other one do you want to try? And I'm like, that one, the one right next to it. I don't think they go well together. I don't give a fuck. Can we end this? What is that cowboy movie with the two gay cowboys in the uh, Brokeback Mountain moment with the ice cream? We just end it? Oh, God, I'm getting creeped out right now. But uh, I'll tell you something. Though. It, was fucking, it was worth it, man. The ice cream was unbelievable with the grape nuts on it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth grazing another man's hands just to try it. It's fucking phenomenal. Um... So there you go. That was my that was my little moment, and uh, the ice cream was so good. I'm gonna go there again, and uh, I'm gonna try my best to get a female the next time I have to do that. That might get dangerous, right? Then what a fucking no, no, no. I'm not even gonna go down. I, I don't do sex jokes. Okay, they're too fucking easy. All right, I just trash Jesus. All right, so that was my gay little moment of the week. Um, I can't get fucking comfortable. Why can I? I can't. I'm standing up. I'm sitting back down. My foot feels a lot better, by the way. I want to thank the, the – I had a couple of doctors who actually listen to this, or at least they say they are. And uh, whoever was the one who told me to take a bottle of water and freeze it in the fridge and roll that underneath the arch of my foot, it's done fucking wonders. So pass that on. If you ever fuck up the arch of your foot and every time you go to take a step and it feels like there's, there's, there's an invisible smurf, just stab in the bottom of your foot. Just do a bunch of calf stretches. Almost like runner stretches is what you do. And then like like three, four times a day, 
just roll a frozen bottle of water underneath your arch. It's like you're massaging it and icing it all at the same time. And I got to tell you, you want to talk about a fucking ice cream headache, take a frozen bottle of water and stick it on the bottom of your foot. Um, but, you know, you get used to it. You get fucking used to it. So I want to thank whoever uh, whoever told me to do that. I somehow lost the email with all my web stuff this week. Um, but anyways, plowing ahead here. I have I have more exciting news right now. I am currently getting ready to do my fifth uh, performance on the David Letterman program, number five. My fifth uh, time going to go out there and do some stand up, and uh, I'm putting together the set right now. I'm very confident. I think everything's going good. It's ahead of schedule, and tonight I'm literally going to sit down and uh, before I go out, I have it all worked out. And I just have to type it out. Like, my jokes are easily, I can take the curse words out easily. um, Because so much of my cursing is not even necessary. I just like to do it. And then, because I love getting the emails like, so much of your cursing, you don't even need it. Those fucking people who sit there and they think that clean comedy is like this unbelievable thing. Like, how do you do it? I just don't understand it, you know. It's I'm not saying it's 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 a bad thing, but the way people like that that right there, that's a pure that's pure fuck. You know what? That that's like watching Lawrence Welk, and because they're just so wholesome that you just think that none of those guys in that band are a racist. You know, you know people who watch clean comedy and then just think, see right there, that's what comedy's all. That's a fucking band. Those are the same people who, like, their neighbor ends up being a serial killer, right? And they always say the same shit. He was so nice. Like, what is your definition of nice? Because they say hello to you every morning. Good morning. How are you? Nice weather we're having. He's so nice. He always says hello. He never curses. It's wholesome. It's wholesome comedy, you know? Look at fucking Hugh Grant. Could you get any more wholesome than that guy? Hugh Grant killed... The hooker scene on Sunset, I learned that. When he got busted, there used to be hookers walking up and down the street back in the fucking heyday. But because that guy didn't even have the decency to pull down the fucking side street, the guy's got one blowing him as he goes into In-N-Out Burger. You know, but you look at his movies, and he plays this bumbling, oh, 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 oh. he's out there banging hookers. So all you fucks, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it, you're idiots. You're idiots. Your 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 basis for somebody being nice is they say nice things. You know, have you taken any psychology classes? Have you ever, I don't know what, tried to break somebody down and figure out why they do the shit that they do? Why am I yelling at all of you guys like you disagreed with me? Obviously, you don't give a shit if I curse if you listen to this thing. You know what I did, right? I should have been playing Catholic church music right underneath that. That's what I was doing right there. I was guilting you guys about something you didn't even fucking do. What an asshole. I apologize. So anyways, that's just typical me. I had great news, and then I have to go a negative way with it. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to be taping on um, Monday, May 16th, and then I believe it airs that Friday, which is uh, May 20th. So set your DVRs and all that type of stuff, and uh, I'm going to go out there and have a great time. So there is that, and another big piece of news for the trifecta here is I finally have a date in Las Vegas. That's right. After years of people asking me on the podcast, dude, why don't you come to Vegas? What's the deal, man? Um, Tom Papa, who is the host of The Marriage Ref, very funny show on NBC everybody should watch. Good friend of mine, Tom Papa. Wholesome Tom Papa does not curse in his act. You know? Granted, he's murdered half his fucking neighbors, but no, I'm kidding. Um, he, he hosts a show at the Orleans Casino in uh, Las Vegas, okay? So just go to uh, – I have all the information up on my website, uh, billbird.com. Um, but it's not going to have my name on it because it's Tom's show. I'm coming on, and I'm basically doing the Tom Papa comedy show. So if you see Tom Papa, uh, why don't I give you the fucking dates and stop running my goddamn mouth? Uh, I'm very excited about this date because uh, – Huge fan of uh, Tom Papa. Uh, Good friend of mine. And I don't get to work with a lot of my friends anymore because they're all headlining. So there's a rare time that I get to work 
with another comedian that I respect and am friends with. Uh, okay, so it's on June 25th and 26th. It's a Friday night. And one of the cool things about the Orleans uh, Casino, it's the last uh, place where George Carlin did stand-up. See that? A lot of people didn't know that, did they? You didn't, did you? So uh, there's that, and that, that ends that. Now, what the fuck did I want to talk about? I just had a great segue there, and I couldn't remember what the hell I was going to talk about. Jesus Christ. This always happens whenever I re-record these things. I have these moments. I have these little lulls. And I've learned to not panic during them. Let's talk about a show that I saw on ESPN called uh, 30 for 30. It's this great new segment. If you're a sports fan, set your DVR and check this shit out. Um, They're doing stories on uh, who killed the USFL. uh, The United States Football League, which I I didn't know somebody killed it. I just thought it didn't work out. You know, um, I actually, a lot of people don't know this. I actually went to a USFL game. I saw the Boston Breakers versus the Washington Federals at Nickerson Field in uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. And the Boston Breakers won. And it was almost a capacity crowd, just out of curiosity. And uh, I still remember a lot of the teams. Philadelphia Stars, the New Jersey Generals, owned by Donald Trump, had Herschel Walker and Doug Flutie. Remember that shit? Michigan Panthers won it the first year. Bobby A. Bear, is that who was the quarterback who then went and played with the Saints? Believe it or not, I'm not looking this shit up on the internet. I actually remember this stuff. And my favorite fucking helmet, I thought the Michigan Panthers had a cool helmet, but I liked uh, Oakland. They had like that that fist holding the lightning bolt on that yellow helmet. It was the shit. And I thought it was very fitting because the Raiders have the best uniforms in all of football. And everyone's tried to rip them off. Whenever your team becomes too pussy-like, they always go, well, let's fucking steal the Raiders. We'll start wearing black because that's a badass color. Remember Jerry Glanville? Huh? Speaking of marshmallows, that dough boy, remember that? When nobody respected the Houston Oilers, all of a sudden he gets a black satin fucking Houston Oilers jacket. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So anyway, so I watched one episode of it. I can't re- recommend it high enough. I watched one on the University of Miami called The U. And it was talking about the heyday of the University of Miami um, it was fucking awesome, man. It was just an awesome thing on so many different levels. Just showing how badass their team were was, how crazy their team was. And then also just watching all those old guys now exaggerating all their fucking stories was hilarious. And that's the great thing about being an old guy. If you did something at 8, when you retell the story, you did it at 15. And they, they were doing it to such a ridiculous level that I almost forgot that I was alive when that shit was going down because it sounded like a brand new story to me. I mean, granted, they were not liked throughout college football and college sports in general, without a doubt. They were considered crass, no class, thugs, all the a- absolute fucking lootly. But to tell the way they tell this story, it's it's just like and the president was like, fuck Russia. What's going on at the University of Miami? I mean, it was a, at the end of the day, it's a fucking football team. It's hilarious. This one guy goes, we were like Ali. Talking trash. Oh, yeah, you were just like Ali. You know? He basically brought talking shit to a whole nother art form. He basically was the first guy to do it, uh, not even on a national. He did it on a global level. And he was also stripped of his title because he wouldn't go to war because of religious reasons. And he stuck by it. And you guys grabbed your dicks after catching touchdown passes? Oh, yeah, that's the same thing. You, you would just like it. You know what it's like? It always goes back to that same quote when I see that, that Bill Russell clip. Bill Russell was talking about his philosophies on rebounding. I knew what the guy, I broke the guy down. I blah, 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 blah. And then he's just like, so a lot of times I got the rebound before the guy ever even took the shot. You know, really, Bill? Really? You could, it wasn't it really that you were six foot 10 and everybody else was a five foot eight inch fucking white guy at that point? Other than Wilt Chamberlain, who was, you know, didn't everybody look like Bob Cousy? You know, but he's an old man now. So he, he, get, he gets to fucking, he gets to, to exaggerate. Like, look at Pau Gasol when they won game one uh, the other night. Oh, no, when they, when they closed it out. Sorry, when they closed it out against Oklahoma. When, when Kobe missed that, uh, he misses that shot, and then Pau, you know, caught the rebound and all the one motion put it in. I can't wait 
I mean, it's not like he's going to tell it to me. I would love to hear him tell it later on in life. How he's going to be like, you know. I mean, did you see the look on his face? He couldn't even believe it. He was like, oh, my God. Kobe's finally not going to yell at me on the jet ride home. I did something good. I did something good. He didn't even know what to do. It was like when Phil Mickelson finally won the Masters and he jumped up in the air and then landed on the ground because he felt weird. Like he didn't, he, he, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to do. But later on in life when that fucking old fish head, maybe when his head finally fucking fills out and it's round like a head's supposed to be rather than looking like the Sunday paper turned sideways. <laughs> um, God help me if that guy ever sees me. I really forget that just because... NBA players can throw him around that I am only five foot ten inches and he can fucking throw me through an Applebee's wall upside down. Um anyways, yeah, when he goes to tell that story, it's gonna be fucking hilarious. He was just gonna it was a moment in the game and I knew something had to happen. You know, and when he let that ball go, I knew it wasn't gonna go in and something told me. I don't know where that ball's gonna come off the rim, but I'm gonna be there. You know, he's going to tell it like that. That's what, if, if you're like me, if you're in your early 40s and you were around when the University of Miami uh, was winning all those titles, dude, the way that they taught, you would have thought the entire country was, was just quaking in the corner because of a fucking football, it was a football team. It was hilarious. You know, especially being a guy from Boston, which is not a college sports town, we're a professional sports town. All right, so all we know about the University of Miami is that the fucking BC Eagles beat you on the last play of the game. That's your badass team? Fucking 65-yard goddamn prayer? As Tom Jackson says, knock it down, and you didn't. You let Gerard Phelan sneak in behind you? How does that happen? How does a fucking little white dude get behind all those black guys on defense? It's, it's physically impossible. White guys can't do shit like that. Um, so anyways, but definitely watch it because, uh, the, the guy who keeps reining it in is Michael Irvin. Cause Michael Irvin is just really fucking honest because at one point they were saying, you know, the media was biased. They were racist, you know, which obviously, you know, there's tremendous element, tr- amount of truth to that. They were saying that while they were cutting to stories of these guys bringing guns to clubs, you know, and then they finally cut to Michael Irvin and Michael Irvin was hilarious. He was just like, you know, a lot of guys say that the media was biased, but now nah, the truth is we, we, we were a bunch of bad kids. We were bad kids. <laughs> so, you know, you can't fucking argue with the honesty. All right, let's get into the topics here. I know I said it. All right, YouTube videos for this week. If you're sitting at your cubicle, right? Your boss has been a cunt today and you feel like fucking it off, you know, sticking it to the man. Here's a couple for you to watch. Uh, two quick ones. Fuck you, Baltimore. That's a great one. Uh, parody of a car commercial. And uh, there's another one. If you're a sports fan. Do you know, like, the new thing when you go to a game, like, the insane, like, flat-screen TV, like, they make some sort of intro for your team to get the crowd psyched up, like, uh, like, picks, like, the, like, maybe, like, the Nashville Predators, how they have, like, that saber tooth tiger. Maybe they'll just have, like, a, you know, computerized saber tooth tiger doing some shit with, like, a hockey stick or whatever. I got the best one ever that is so fucking politically incorrect. If you guys ever wondered what a computerized polar bear would look like if it decided to blow up the world and actually it actually blows up the world it the planet earth gets blown up by this psycho fucking polar bear it's the uh it's the nanook hockey opening 2010 that's what you want to search and nanook is n a n o o k hockey opening 2010 it starts with a boat uh an ice breaking boat you know, obviously it's an Alaskan team, I'm guessing, with Nanook, unless it's, I don't know, the U- Yukon Territories, I have no idea. And there's a polar bear frozen in the ice, and it, it because they break up the ice, the polar bear gets mad, comes up through the ice. It's ten times bigger than the fucking boat. I'll just tell you the beginning. And then some sort of supernatural shit happens where it claps its hands together, like Michael Clark Dun- Duncan in that movie about Death Row and the mouse, Right? And all of a sudden, it has like a, a, a hockey stick that's glowing like a lightsaber. The thing lets out a growl and then slams it down on the ice-breaking ship, breaks it in half, and the fucking thing sinks. And the first thing I'm thinking was, well, what about the people on the boat, right? 
Isn't that what they'd say at the arena? I think it's good that there's a teddy bear, but does it have to kill people on a boat? This thing, that that's just where this starts. I don't know what happens after that. Next thing you know, it's in an F-16 and the fucking planet Earth blows up. This is for the beginning of a hockey game. It's the greatest one I've ever seen if you're into that type of shit. So check it out. Nanook Hop- Hockey Opening 2010. All right, let's get on with the questions for this week. Uh, ask Bill. Um, this is a very interesting question, and um, I think I might need a little bit of help on this one because this goes outside the realms of uh, what I've been doing with my life. Um, Bill, I've been meaning to ask you. I'm afraid that when I'm an adult and have responsibility that I will not be able to smoke weed. I'm not a pothead. I smoke about a few times a week, more in the summer. Um, I get decent grades at a decent school. I feel like professional and family life won't allow me to blaze anymore. This is what I love about this is right up until then, right up until he says the word blaze, I'm really, I'm really believing this guy, you know. Whatever, you know, I smoke a couple of joints a week. You know, I do well in school. Had a great school, you know. I'm very responsible. I don't drink and drive a couple times a week. I have a, if he said I have a couple of tokes, no big deal. I get it, you know. You want to watch Laverne and Shirley and eat fiddle faddle. I don't have a problem with that, you know. But once you say blaze, I'm just, that, that's at least, isn't that like blunt level? Because I always just, I mean, I'm not a pothead. I don't even smoke this shit. So I, I just picture blaze, meaning that there has to be some sort of significant, source of fire to get that joint going like it's that big maybe i'm wrong because i'm a booze hound so anyways he goes do you think this is true do you think anyone uh do you know anyone your age or older who do smoke (laughs) decent grades at a different at a decent school okay do you know anyone your age or older who do smoke all right um this is my feelings on on weed i don't think it's that bad um especially nowadays we can get like a vaporizer Check that out. Or go to uh, the MM, what is it? www.themmppodcast.com and I'll have a picture for you. I guarantee it. Um, a vaporizer is basically you, you, you put the weed in there, you light it on fire or whatever the fuck you do, and it basically filters out everything except what gets you high. Now, that has to be way more healthier than sitting down and finishing a six pack, isn't it? I guess it depends if you get the munchies and then you go out and eat cake and ice cream. I have no fucking idea. But anyways, I think, yeah, I, there's, you know, I know people who are married and have kids. And, uh, you know, every once in a while they go out, send their kids to bed, have a couple of puffs. But, you know, you know, kids, they'll figure out what you're doing. That's the only thing. You have to really hide it because uh, I, I don't think I would smoke weed in front of my kids ever because even though I don't think it's any worse than having a beer, it isn't. It really isn't. Um, the thing is, is you are knowingly breaking the law, and it is considered like you know you're on drugs. Where for some reason alcohol isn't, which is complete bullshit. But it is. So to just do that in front of a kid, and you know, how kids they always want to outdo you. They see you drinking a six pack. They're gonna try to go for you know at least eight to twelve. I don't know. So I would just be worried. This is with no psychological, you know, psychology background or any of that shit. I would just think if you if your kid saw you smoking weed that he would be smoking weed by at least 7th or 8th grade, maybe 10th if he was a fucking nerd at that point. But um and then I don't think it would be that big a leap to coke. I really wouldn't. Now I know, potheads, this is like a fucking big thing with you guys. Well, it's just bullshit. It's just bullshit. There's no proof that it's a fucking gateway drug. Really? I think it is. Because everybody I know went that route. You started off with booze, then you went to weed, then you went to coke, and whatever else. So you are weed, you went to coke, or they had crank. Anybody remember that shit? Um, or whatever else you did. Took pills, whatever you did. You're just like, whatever. It's acid. But you always went weed first. I mean, as far as I know, that's how uh, people who I didn't hang out with in high school did it. Look at me, still being a fucking friend, not throwing anybody under the bus. Um, oh, dude, speaking of that, I'm back back at my hometown this weekend. Really excited. Thursday and Friday, I'm at the Wilbur Theater. Friday night is already sold out. Uh, Thursday night, tickets are still available. Go to BillBird.com, click on the Wilbur Theater. Fr- uh, Thursday, May 6th for tickets. I'm really whoring myself out this week. And um, 
Yeah, and I'll be in Atlantic City on Saturday night doing the Trump Taj Mahal. Um, anyways, so yeah, that's my answer. I, I think, yeah, you can easily continue to smoke weed. Just be open and honest with the person that you're with and just say, look, you know, I don't smoke it every fucking day. Uh, I just would rather do that than have like 12 beers and become a fat fuck, you know? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy a, uh, I don't even know what the, what the, what the quantity is. If you smoke twice a week, what would you need? How much would you need? Would you need a couple of buds? Would that get you through it? I don't know. Just a couple of buds a month. That's all. That's all I'm going to do, sweetheart. All right? Don't look at me that way, okay? I'm a smart guy. I went to a smart school. And, uh, you know, do you know anyone your age or older who do smoke? Um, all right, that's it. That is it for that. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, what do we got here? Hey, Bill, it's been about two weeks since the April 19th podcast when you said you wanted the listeners to ask you the following question. If I happen to be a comedian, what are the general rules if I am opening for the headlining act? All right. Uh, yeah. I did not have a good time that weekend. So, yeah, this is what you would want to do. You Just go up and do your act within the allotted time you're given. If somebody tells you to do 25 minutes, do 25 minutes and do your act. If you want to blow me off the stage, go up there and absolutely fucking destroy with your jokes. If you want to try to make it hard on me as a comedian, if you want the club owner to be looking at you going like, this guy's going to headline someday, that's the way you do it. You go up there, you do your act, and you fucking destroy, and you make it hard for me. All right? That's the ideal. Okay? Now, there's other, there's, there's some headliners out there that tell, like, you're basically, another thing uh, as, as courtesy to the closing act is you're not overly dirty and you don't play with the crowd. That's another, that's another thing. You know, there's other people, they say, don't go in the green room you know, some people who was like fucking divas, they don't want anybody in there or they're tired. And then there's other headliners who won't even let you sell shit. You know, sometimes feature acts come up to me and like, I have yo-yos. Can I sell my yo-yos? Some headliners don't let you do that. So this is my shit. I don't give a fuck how dirty you are because I'm filthy. I don't give a shit. You can talk to the crowd. I don't give a fuck. You can come in the green room. You can sell your shit afterwards. I don't give a shit. Just do your time. Just stick to your fucking time. All right. Don't go up there and do when you're supposed to do 20, do 40 minutes and say, oh, hey, sorry about that. And then I say, OK, that's cool. Whatever. We all do that every once in a while. And then the next night on the late show, you do 37 minutes and you're talking to the crowd and you're saying mean shit to them and you're not really killing, but you're not bombing. You just, you know, it, this is a technique that some features do to try to make the headliner look bad is they go over their time. And they fuck with the crowd, and they're overly dirty, or they'll say mean stuff. And it's basically they're blowing out the parameters of the show, and then they're also they're making the crowd tired, you know. And uh, so then when you go up as, a, as, as the headlining act, rather than having a crowd that's ready to go, they're already worn out. You're coming up there, and the, the energy is like you've already been up there for a fucking half an hour. That's like how tired they are. And... Uh, that was basically the scenario that I was in. There's this guy did 40, and then he did 37. And then when I said, dude, what the fuck? That's, just, that's two out of three shows. He then hit me with the brilliant, oh, how much time do you want me to do? You know, which is like an open micer question. This guy was actually older than I was, okay? You know, the club told you how much time to do. So either you're deliberately trying to make it difficult on me by boring the shit out of this crowd for an extra 20 fucking... This guy was supposed to do 20 minutes. He did 40. He's doing twice his time. Um, yeah, it was one of those deals. Either that or uh, I don't know what your deal is. I don't know. I, I was not able to figure this guy out. Um, and it was actually a sad thing because he was a smart guy and he had good jokes and he should have just done them. And uh, even like Saturday night, then he goes up there and then he did, he did like 14 minutes. And I, I was just beside myself. So now I got to cover an hour and 15. Rather than just doing his 20 minutes, and I go up there, you know, and I do my hour, hour and 10. Now he, he's up there for, you know, like 12 minutes or some shit. So now I got to cover the rest of it. And it's it's I just wanted to be like, dude, what is your problem? You know, what you don't have a watch? 
you know, you've been doing this shit long enough. I know you headline. I know you know what it's like when somebody does that amount of time in front of you. So, I don't know. I just basically, after uh, after he said, uh, what did he say? How much time do you want me to do? I just basically stopped talking to him for the rest of the weekend because uh, it, that was just like, I can't exp- You know like when somebody asks a question and when what they're really saying is, I think you're a fucking moron? That's basically what he was saying. I think you're a fucking moron. Like, you're going to be three shows into the weekend and the comedy club never told you how much time to do in front of the headlining act, you know, and you never asked in three shows in, you don't know where the light is and you already went over on the first show and you apologize for it. And then, then you fucking do it again. And it's like, yeah, that's either you're a moron or you just don't give a shit. And this guy was not dumb. So either he didn't give a fuck or he was doing it on purpose, which is how I took it. I took it like this guy's doing this on purpose to make me look like an asshole. But fortunately, I'm a fucking beast, and I had no problem following the guy. But it was just bullshit. I didn't. I felt like I was going on up after like a fucking telethon. And for all you young comics out there, I know you're not. Gonna, it's a stupid fucking thing to do because I actually would have said nice things about the guy because he had good jokes. And uh, but I also, you know, I'm not gonna go bad mouth him. To be honest with you, I don't even remember his fucking name. You know, I don't even remember his fucking name. So that's it. So that was my weekend. That's what I was dealing with. I was staying there, and this guy was going over, and he was like, What? You mean you don't like a bucket of shit dumped over your head before you go up? What? Oh, I didn't know that. I've only been doing it for 20 fucking years. I have no idea. I, what are the rules? Do you just keep going until you feel like you want to get up? What? How do you feature for somebody? I have no idea. I've just been doing stand-up since fucking uh, Rita Rudner was an open micer. I don't know anything. It was, it was fucking ridiculous. And um, whatever. Whatever. And I just felt like, yeah, why don't I tell the whole story? I felt like, it, like somebody at the club should have said something to the fucking guy um, they, after the second time. You know, and nobody did. And then I'm put in a position like, do I go to the club owner like a like a fucking girl and tell on the guy? So I, I decided to say something to him. You know, and then he hit me with that shit. How much time do you want me to do? Gee, I don't know. You've been in this business 20 years. When's the last time you heard somebody go? Yeah, do 37 in front of me. Do 37 and be sure to piss off as many people in the crowd as, as, as possible before I go up there. That That would be awesome. And if there's somebody drunk in the crowd, by all means, just keep going back and forth with them and turn it into an absolute shit fest before I go up there. That would be great. And if you could go do twice the amount of time that they told you to do and act like you have no fucking idea, that would, that, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. I'm sure that that's what you're looking for when you go out and headline. All right, I got a little upset there. Um, so that was my experience. So there you go. That's what you're supposed to do. All right? You know, just go up there and do your fucking act. And if you kill him, the guy after you cannot follow you, he'll have no reason to complain because you didn't fuck with the crowd. You weren't dirty. You just did your shit and he couldn't follow you. That's the deal. All right. So we're going to end with this one. Uh, Somebody asked me a hypothetical question. I think this is a new topic here. Hypotheticals. Uh, A little hypothetical for you. Uh, If something happened to your dog and she needs an operation that's going to cost 50 grand, but there's only a 65% chance that she'll survive the operation. Do you pay? Absolutely. fucking lutely Absolutely. I'd pay twice that. Absolutely. 65%? Absolutely. I'll put my mortgage down on that. She's a fucking pit bull. She's a warrior. You know? That's my buddy. Absolutely. Come on. You know, you know my dog? My dog might do a lot of things, but you know what it wouldn't do? It wouldn't go up and do 37 minutes in front of me. It wouldn't. Okay? Because there's a loyalty to a pit bull that that son of a bitch didn't have when I was out there. All right? (laughs) Ah, fuck. I ran out of time. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do the whole whole bad covers, the worst covers you've ever heard. I got to break out that list next week. Uh, You guys are sending me some great ones. One that I can remember off the top of my head was... um, was when Earth, Wind, Fire did a did a cover of Paul McCartney. I think it was with the Beatles that got to get you into my life. 
And it was a song that when the Beatles did it or Paul McCartney, I forget, it was a great song, you know. And when Earth, Wind and Fire did it, they somehow turned it into this smooth jazz sort of, uh, you hear the song and you start moving your head like those dudes in Night at the Roxbury. It's just, it's one of the worst. The harmonies, uh, got to get you into my life. But up, but up, but it's fucking horrible, and it's no excuse because it's a big, it's a fucking like twenty-seven black guys were in Earth, Wind, and Fire. You would think one of them would be like, "Hey, this kind of sucks," you know? How the hell did we pull this off? This sounds like somebody white did a cover of this. That's how fucking awful it was. All right. Anyways, that was the uh, that's the podcast for this week. Sorry if it was a little bit late this week, but uh, once again, all you have to do if you want to get the podcast is, uh, you know what, you have to do, listen to the beginning of this podcast, god damn it, I've already told you, you go to iTunes, uh, click on Advance, this is on a Mac, you go down, scroll two down to the subscribe podcast, then you type in www.billbird.com slash podcast, and you're in, and you got them all, and they're going to be here from till the end of fucking time, all right, that is it, God bless all of you, thanks for listening to the podcast, and uh, I'll talk to you next week when I'm out in Boston, all right, bye-bye. Heavenly flowers I dreamed of paradise for two My sweet Melania You are my paradise completed Oh lovely Melania You are my dream come true Paradise completed Oh lovely Leilandia You are my dream